Good. Uh, I wanted to ask you about um, uh, AJ, um, especially in terms of that the uh, the yards after catch. Uh, you know, he, he's never necessarily had like the blinding speed, or at least not considered to. And, and you know, I don't know what his his separation is on on most routes, but you know, what is it in your mind um, that you know, despite maybe not being at the top of the charts in some of those numerical fields. You know, he still gets that that incredible yards after catch. What's he doing? You know, I guess when the when at that point when he catches the ball, I just you know he has a lot of power. He's a really strong kid, and um, you know when he gets in the open field, his competitive spirit and that power all kind of combined, you know, makes it hard to catch. Makes it hard to catch him. Um, but he's just a powerful guy that that understands how to generate that speed, and 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 he can hold it because he's so strong. Mm-hmm. Does he make the, the hey, kind of the coach, real quick? Could I have you move your cameras a little bit so we can see you? Because we got some. Oh, TVs. I'm sorry, man. I You're apologize. Good. You're good. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. Um, I wonder if does he make that kind of transition from, uh, you know, before the ball uh, gets there to, to catching it and moving with it quicker than than most receivers. Uh, I think when you have a, a guy like AJ who's who's got really strong natural hands, um, it, it gives you it, it allows you to to get up field quicker, um, mm-hmm. because you're not body catching, you're not you don't have your feet off the ground. His feet are always on the ground. That's why he transitions so quickly. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, Jim. Hey Rob, hope you're doing well. Um, Adam, I guess, is still trying to find his way back. What are you able to do with him to get him up to speed so when he's ready to return, he uh, hits the ground running? Um, you know, last week, you know, he got a little bit of practice in. Um, so I think that's going to bowl well for him. But um, really just put him through the, you know, the everyday grind that we go through, um, you know, to make sure that, um, that he's, you know, firing, firing on all cylinders, you know, make sure he's got his – his timing back, uh, make sure he's, you know, uh, gets all the different looks he's going to need to get. Um, but really it's going to be a matter of him, um, you know, being able to go through a full practice, a full week of practice anyway, um, you know, to kind of get his feet back and, and, and get his timing back. That's what it's going to come down to. And, and I'm, I got one for Corey, and I'm sorry if you've been asked this, but just it's kind of remarkable the last couple of weeks he's been able to keep on playing and producing despite – you know, losing his brother, how much have you talked to him to try to keep him, keep his mind in it? And, and what do you, what do you say in a, in a, when he's dealing with something like that? Um, you know, you know, fortunately, you know, I've been, I've never, you know, I have three brothers of my own and a sister and, and I've, and they're all with me. So uh, I haven't had to deal with that. Um, but, you know, having lost my dad, you know, who was, I was extremely close to, um, I do have a perspective on it, but it's different for everybody. I think he's done an unbelievable job of, of being, able to, being able to reconcile with what's, what's, what hap- what's happened to him uh, and, and somehow compartmentalize and be able to focus on, on the job at hand. Um, you know, but I, that, I can't sit here and take credit for anything he's done. He's just done a great job of, of, of showing a lot of maturity, um, really a lot of seeing a lot of growth in him this year in terms of, uh, be able to handle some tough situations. Um, and, you know, he's just done a great job. And, and that's just something that, uh, you know, we have to, I have to tip my hat to him uh, because not everybody can do. And I got one on AJ. I, I think it was uh, Xavier Rhodes seemed like he got so riled up. I don't know even what he did, but AJ kind of takes a lot of that back and forth with a smile on his face. What, what's he like from a personality standpoint on the field? He seems like he's got the – killer instinct but he doesn't seem like he gets does anything mean-spirited and always seems to have a good nature about him well I think um, you know anytime we're, we're all as, play, as players we all have those certain things that trigger us and certain things that we may not like when done to us and it's different for everybody um, and it was just an episode in the game where um, you know he did something that he didn't appreciate and he kind of you know wanted to send a message to him like hey don't do that and that's basically what happened. Uh, Terry? Uh, Rob, back on AJ for a minute. How much do you feel like that the drop he had in the first Indy game kind of ate at him because he, it was most likely going to be a touchdown? And do you want guys to 
just put things like that behind him or was he able to kind of use it as motivation because he played really well on Sunday? Uh, yeah, he was really upset with himself. Um, you know, he was really upset with himself because he knew that it was a play that could have gave us some momentum and, and really could have changed the, uh, the course of the game. So that's something that, uh, that he, he dealt with for a couple of weeks and he had circled this game to, to kind of redeem himself. But, um, you know, I, one of the things we talk about in that room is that we got to have a short memory. You know, we're going to make some mistakes and things are going to happen that we don't want to happen. Um, but this is a week to week league and uh, every week you got to find a way uh, to get refocused, no matter whether you had a great game or didn't play as well as you want. Um, so that um, so, so that those bad things that have happened, they don't become repetitive uh, because we can't we can't put them behind us. And then on another unrelated topic, a lot of times at the wide receiver position, you get productive guys, but a lot of times they have ego and there's baggage like that that comes with them. What's been what's the key with your guys? Why why are they so productive, but they don't seem to have the ego that a lot of guys uh, bring at that position? Um, you know what? I think Coach Vrabel does a great job of, of really um, – defining for these guys what, what, what a team is. And, um, you know, he, you know, he really gets these guys to buy in and that he's going to treat you the way you treat the team. And these guys know that um, there's nothing that they can't ask for in terms of if there's a need in regards, I need this to be a better player. Well, you know what, John and Coach Ray, we're going to go out and get that done. Um, but I also think that there is a measure of, of ego that's involved with it because that's how you survive in this league. You know, if you're a player and you don't think you belong here, you doubt that you belong here, well, you won't be here very long. So, um, you know, there's a certain amount of healthy ego you got to have in order to play at a high level of this league because so many people tell you what you can't do, what you're not, and all those other things. So, um, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a healthy amount of that you got to have, and it's just a matter of uh, knowing how to control that and not letting it get in the way of, of team goals. Uh, Teron? Yeah, hey, what's up, Coach? Uh, looking at, at AJ and, and some of the things that you guys have worked on, you're seeing improvement there, like with, with the hand-to-hand -hand within the routes and just, you know, being able to be more sudden at the line because they're playing closer. How would you say he's progressed with the work that you guys have done and, and what's happening in games now? Uh, he, he's still a work in, in progress when it comes to that. Um, I think he's gotten a lot better, you know, at the top of the route in terms of being able to play with his hands and understanding how to disengage and all those things. But uh, at the line of scrimmage, um, you know, we still have some work to do. Um, but the one thing about him is, is he's constantly trying to find ways to get better. And, and, and he's one of those guys that will put the work in to get it done. Some guys pay, pay lip service to it, say they want to get better at it, but don't actually put forth the work to get that done. And uh, he's somebody that will certainly uh, take the time to, um, to try and improve whatever his weaknesses are. Within that receiver room, do you ever use clips, like show these guys clips of, of any other players, maybe even yourself? Uh, of course, not myself, but, you know, we watch, you know, other guys. We watch, we've watched Michael Thomas and Devontae Adams and you know, Adam Thielen and, you know, all the guys, because every receiver in this league probably has a route that, that defines them. And, um, yeah. Player, you always want to find out, okay, you know, how is he excelling at this route? And it may be a route that I'm not quite as good at. Um, so we're always looking for different ways. Um, and, and the best way to learn a lot of times is by actually seeing somebody else do it. How far back does your catalog go? Because you mentioned all guys that have played now. But do, do you go back, you know, maybe, maybe to Chad Johnson or Stevie Johnson or anyone like that? Um, You know, I have not. I have not gone back uh, that far. Basically, man, really, if something catches my eye, no matter who it is or when they Got play, it. you know, I tag it. And, uh, and I, if I think it can help us, I'll show it to them. Got you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Coach, what was your defining route? Uh, I, 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 I love the shake route, the post corner. That's, one, that's probably my favorite route and the goal ball. Those are my two favorites. They had some of those routes that show me the money. <laughs> the original Rod Tidwell. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that they did. That they did. That's funny. <laughs>